سورة القلم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دی فرسٹ سیون اور نائن آیات آف دس سورا اینڈ آئی تھنک سیون آر دی سیکنڈ وہی ٹو محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دی فرسٹ از دی فائیو فرسٹ آیات آف سورت العلق اقرا بسم رب کا لذی خلق خلق الانسان من علق اینڈ دی سیکنڈ وہی از دس بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نون والقلم وما یسترون It is starting with one letter, نون We had already سورہ قاف سورہ سواد This is the third one والقلم وما یسترون And by the pen and by that which they write ما انتا بے نعمت ربکا بے مجنون You, O Prophet, Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Are not by the blessing of your Lord a mad man or a possessed man by demons or crazy. No, nothing of the sort. Now actually this was the first reaction of the people of Makkah. When the first way he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he came and, and he said, said, and an angel came to me, I was alone in Hera, and this thing happened. So maybe a general reaction And it was not in enmity, I think. It was simple reaction. Oh, maybe some jinn has possessed him. Maybe it was some delusion, some illusion, some hallucination. What has happened to him? So that was the first reaction. And people started saying, he has gone mad, perhaps. He has lost his mental balance, perhaps. Perhaps he has been possessed by some evil spirit or jinn. But when the Prophet heard these things, he was hurt. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling him. No, don't feel hurt. Noon qalame wa ma yastaroon. The pen and all this academic record that this pen has collected, it testifies that you, O Muhammad, cannot be a mad person. Nobody can say this. وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَعَجِلًا غَيْرَ مَمْنُونَ And for you, there is going to be a reward which will be unending. وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And surely you are on an extremely sublime character. Can any madman have this type of character which you have, O Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم? Actually, these people have gone mad. فَسَتُبْسِرُ وَيُبْسِرُونَ So very soon, you will also see and they will also see. بِأَيَّكُمُ الْمَفْتُونَ Who among you was afflicted with madness? إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ عَلَمُ بِمَنْ مُلَّا عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ وَهُوَ عَلَمُ بِالْمُحْتَدِينَ Surely your Lord knows best who has gone astray from his way and he knows best who are rightly guided. فَلَا These are the seven ayat. We end here. فَلَا تُطْعِي الْمُكَزِّبِينَ Now this is later period, these ayats which are being revealed at some later time and joined here. So Muhammad Sassam, you don't obey or you don't even listen attentively to these people who are belying you. وَدُّوا لَوْ تُدْهِنُوا فَيُدْهِنُونَ They wish that you should be ready to make a compromise. So that they will also make a compromise. وَلَا تُطَيْكُ اللَّهَ اللَّهَ فِي الْمَحِينَ Don't obey. The mean swearer. This is Walid bin Mughira or Akhdas bin Quraysh. Hammaz bin Mashaim bin Ameen. The favor going about with calumnies. Mannail lil khair, hinderer of good. Mu'tadin, transgressor, aseem, sinful. Utullin, harsh. Ba'da zalik azaneem. And besides all that, of doubtful birth. Ankana za malin wa baneen. Only because he has wealth and sons. Iza tutla alayhi ayatuna qala satirul awwaleen. Whenever revelations are recited unto him, he says, fables of the ancients. Sanasimuhu alal khurtum. We shall put a seal on his prominent nose. Inna balawnahu kama balawna ashab al jannah. Now a story of some people who owned a garden, some brothers. 
and the garden, you know, the fruit was ready to be plucked. So they made, made a decision at night that we shall tomorrow go and pluck the fruit. And they didn't say, Inshallah. This story of those people who believe in Allah, who are not mushriks, who believe in Allah, but they are so much overwhelmed with this worldly life that they forget. Forget Allah. And secondly, because they are not keeping Allah's remembrance in their mind, their character goes down. Moral values go down. So this is a, in a form of a parable, this condition of most of the people who live in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given as an example. We have tried them just as we tried the owners of the garden. Is of Samulayasrimullah Musbahin. When they swore that they would certainly pluck its fruit in the morning. And they made no exception. They didn't say, Inshallah. No. We shall definitely. Tomorrow we have to go. We have to do it. Now during the night, a visitation from your Lord visited it, the garden while they were sleeping. Some hot air blew and the whole of the garden was burnt. Fasbahat kasareem. So the garden became as if it has already been plucked. Fatanada musbainna. There in the garden this has happened. They are at their house. In the morning they are calling each other. Then they called out one to another in the morning. If you want really to pluck the fruit, then go early to your farm. Then they started, departed. And they were saying to each other in low voice, Allah Let no needy and poor person enter it today. Why should they come? What right they have? We worked over this garden. We looked after it. We watered it. Now the fruit is our. But these beggars, these poor men, they gather so that they should also be given something. Why should they get? So see to it that today no beggar, no poor man enters there. Now this is the level of their morality. They have gone down so low. And then they went fully determined in their purpose. Now when they saw their garden, they said, Oh, we have forgotten the way, we have come astray. This is not our garden. But then they realized, Oh, we have been deprived. The middle one, moderate of them said, Did I not keep saying to you, Why do you not glorify Allah? Why have you forgotten Allah? Now they said, They said, Glory to our Lord, surely we were the evildoers. Then they advanced one against the other, blaming each other. You did it. You did it. You made it, made, made us forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You did that. And for that reason, we were, we forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. And the, in the end, Kalu ya wailana inna kunna ta'aheen. Go to us, surely. We were all transgressors. Asa rabbuna yubdilana khairam minha. It may be that our Lord gives us in exchange a better garden than this. Inna ila rabbina raghibun. Surely we are beseechers to our Lord. Now the ayah. This is the lesson. The moral lesson of the story. Kazalik al-azab. In this way chastisement comes. Well, azab al-akhirat akbar. But the chastisement of the hereafter would be much greater. Law kanu ya'lamun. Only if they had known. Because here... If one harvest is gone, you can hope to have the second harvest. But then in the hereafter, no harvest. No chance more. So that is the chastisement. If you keep it away from your mind, just forget, just leave it. No akhira. Then Although they believe in Allah, and they are not mushriks, 
but forgetful of Allah and low in character. Most of the people belong to this category. Inna lil muttaqina in the Rabbihim jannatin na'in. Now, contrary to that, verily for those who fear Allah, for them there are the gardens of bliss with their Lord. Afadajarul muslimina kal mujdemeen. Shall we then treat those who submit to us in Islam like the guilty? If there is no akhra, then both become equal. People who are guilty and people who are doing good deeds, they are equal. If there is no akhra, no resurrection, no reward, no punishment. Malakum kafat. Afanajalul Muslimin akal majrin. Malakum kafat ahkumun. What has happened to you? How do you judge? Amlakum kitabun fi al rasoon. Is there a book for you wherein you study? Inna lakum fi alama taqayyaroon. That you shall surely have in the akhra what you choose. Am lakum aybanun alayna baalgatun alayyum bil qiyama. Do they have the oath from us regarding the day of resurrection? Inna lakum lama taqumun. That you shall have whatever you judge. Salhum. Ask him, O Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Ayyuhum bi zalik azim. Who can guarantee this? Am lakum shuraka. Are there any associates with them? Faliyatu bi shuraka. Him in kanu sadiqi. If they are truthful, then they should bring their shuraka, those who they associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yawma yukshafu an saqin. The day when the shin will be laid bare. Shin of Allah. Now we can't say what will be its form. But in the sahih of Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi, there is a hadith from Abu Sa'id Khudri radiyallahu an. He said it means this. That in the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show to the people some of his grandeur, which he is referring as the shin. And then they will be asked to prostrate before Allah. Yawma yushrafu an saqin wa yudawna ila sujood fala yastati'oon. These unbelievers, disbelievers will not be able to prostrate at that time. They will try, they will want, but no. It will be made impossible for them because in the life before that, in the world, they didn't use to prostrate before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time, what will happen? Khashyatan afsaruhum. Their looks will be downcast. Tarhaquhum zillah. And humiliation will spread over them. Waqad kaanu yudawna ila sujoodi wa hum salimoon. And they were used, they were, they were called to prostrate before their Lord when they were healthy. And sound. Fazarni. So leave me, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa man yukazibu bihad al hadith. And those who belay this Quran. Sadna stadre juhum in hai sulai alamun. We shall step by step lead them on whence they know not. We will give them respite and then pull towards Jahannam. Then some despite, then pull. Just as you know, somebody who's fishing, he, he, he lets the string go, then he uh, pulls towards him, etc. I will give them respite, but surely my plan is firm. Do you, O Muhammad, ask them for a reward so they are burdened with a debt? Aminahumul Ghaibu Fahum Yaktubun. Or they have the knowledge of the unseen and they are writing it down. Fasbir lehukma rabbik. So wait, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for the command of your Lord. Wala takun ka sahib al hood. And don't be like the companion of the fish, Hazrat Yunus Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, who without the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala left his nation. So he was punished. He was swallowed by a fish. And then when he you know, called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the belly of that fish, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal zalimeen. Then Allah excused him. And then he was vomited by the fish on the bear's coast of as far as I think Makran. Fasbir li hukmi rabbika wa la takun ka sahib al hut. So wait patiently for your Lord's judgment and be not like the companion of the fish. When he cried out while he was in anguish, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minal ghalimeen. 
لولان تدارکہ نعمت من ربی لنبی ربی العرائے وہ مضمون Had he not a blessing from his Lord, which reached him, he was actually already thrown on a plain ground near the coast, and he was masmoom. He was in disgrace. Such tabahu rabbu, but later Allah Subhanahu wa Taala excused him, pardoned him, and He chose him again, who brought him nearer to Him. Fajala hu min aswalehin. And then he made him from among the righteous people. Why a kadu lazira kafaru la yuzli kuda kabi afsar him la masa me uzikr. And verily, there is those who disbelieve will almost make you slip with their, their eyes, with their gazes. They used to see Muhammad Sallam with very piercing gazes, piercing eyes, maybe to kill his will, or it was. Also, you know, it did an occult science, so you can overcome somebody's will through this effect through your eyes. So they are doing so. Namma samay uzikr when they are listening to the revelations and the admonition. Maya kuruna in nahula majnoon, and they are saying, but verily he is majnoon. He has been either possessed by a demon or jinn or some evil spirit. Or he has gone mad. From Ahu Allah Zikrul Alamin. Whereas the reality is that it is nothing. This Quran is nothing but an admonition and reminding for all the peoples of the world.